Tune in for Patrick Ching's Painting in Paradise, exclusively on OC16. Hello, I'm Patrick Ching, and thank you for joining me on Painting in Paradise. In this episode, we meet the elusive Hawaiian Hawksville sea turtle called Ea. This species is much rarer than the more abundant Honu or green sea turtle. I'll show you how to draw and paint the Ea and what makes it different from the Honu. All this and more on a reptilian episode of Painting in Paradise! <laughs> Now let's get to know a little more about Hawaii's Hawksville sea turtles. The ea is sometimes called honu ea, although in earlier times the honu and the ea were recognized as very different beings. The ea is known for its beautiful thick shell which was highly prized in old Hawaii for making things like combs, fish hooks, and other decorative ornaments. The outer shell of the ea is made out of a substance called keratin, a similar material to that which makes our fingernails. The ea were hunted so much that their numbers became very low, and in the 1970s, the ea, along with the honu, became protected by law. Unlike the honu, which has been recovering steadily in numbers, the ea has had a slow recovery, and only a small amount of nesting females are known to nest in Hawaii, and only on the islands of Maui, Molokai, and the Big Island of Hawaii. Though the honu and ea are similar in many ways, there are some notable differences. The most noticeable difference is the one which gives the ea its common name, hawk's bill. Yes, the bill of the ea is shaped like that of a hawk, and it's much more pointed and sharper than the blunt bill of the algae-eating honu. The ea uses its sharp bill to tear into its favorite food, which are sea sponges that grow on the ocean floor. Sponges are actually animals, unlike algae, which are plants. So, the honu grazes on algae, while the ea prey on sponges. There are many kinds of sponges that grow upon coral rocks and reefs. Some of them are very vibrant in color, and some of them look rather bland. One of the best ways you can tell if you're looking at an ea is by the scale plates between its eyes. The ea has four plates between its eyes, while the honu only has two. The bottom part of a sea turtle shell is called the plastron, and the top part of the shell is called the carapace. Each section of the turtle shell is called a scoot. The ea can be recognized by its pointed marginal scoots and overlapping central or lateral scoots. These are especially noticeable in younger ea. Mature ea have less pointed edges and smoother carapace than the younger ones, and so their shells may look more like the honu as they get older. When male ea and honu become adults, their tails become very long and they're easy to distinguish from the female and juveniles, which are very short tails. When we return, I'll show you how to draw the Hawksbill sea turtle known as Ea. So now I'm going to show you how I go about drawing the Ea or Hawksbill Sea Turtle. And I tell you what, you get a two for one today, okay? First I'm going to show you how to draw the Honu, the Green Sea Turtle. And the Ea is similar to the Honu. First I'm just going to start with like an upside down, oh like a teardrop shape, okay? And of course that's going to be the shell right there. 
That's going to give us an idea where the shell goes. And I tell you what, I'll just give the shape of the head here, and I'm going to give a little bit of a like a three-quarter view, okay? Yeah. Front flippers got to be nice and big because they need those big front flippers to like fly through the water, okay? Back flippers, they're more like a human hand. They even got like toe bones under there, you know? Okay, so they're shaped very different for steering back there. And a tail, I tell you what, I only got a little paper, so I'm going to make a female or a juvenile turtle with a short tail. The adult males, they got a big, long tail. And right there, I just formed up a basic pattern of a sea turtle. Now, to get the sections or the scoots, every section is called a scoot, I'm going to make like the shell within the shell, okay? You can make sound effects if you like, I do. Bing. All right. And these, around this margin, they're called the marginal scoots. And I tell you what, you got a center one up here, and then you got like 12 off to the side over here. And oh man, I don't know if you're gonna kind of make yourself a little crazy trying to make exactly 12. I'm not going to for this lesson. But they actually do have 12 on the, each side of that center one. Now comes the good stuff, okay? The super secret shape of creating the pattern of the sea turtle's back, okay? It lies in a six-sided shape. I'm gonna put one line facing the head, one line facing the tail, and like the house of a roof on the sides here. All right, so that is a hexagon, right? It's a six-sided shape called a hexagon. I got one of them right in the middle of the turtle's back, and I'm gonna put one more in front, one more in the back. Oh yeah. So now I got three hexagons together. If you get three hexagons together in the middle of your turtle's back, you're gonna be on your way. Okay, now I simply radiate the lines, those outside pointed lines, I send them out to the edge of the shell. Beep, beep, beep. And that will give me the scoot pattern of the sea turtle's back. For the head, I'll give it a little maka. You know what the maka is? Yeah. I give a little white ring around the eye, a little bigger on top. And maybe I can even see a little bit of the other side one, yeah? Give it some dimension. Now, a turtle has skin, which is called leather, and it has uh, scales. They might be called plate scales. Uh, and they have a nice, like a beak, you know, and scales here. And you can actually get to memorize the scales on a sea turtle's head and back and everything. So don't think that's a weird request or, you know, just kind of try it. I did, you know, I got to learn a lot about sea turtles when I was a ranger watching them out there. I also learned that the front scales are quite big. Even the trailing scales on the front flippers are quite big, you know? And they usually got some smaller ones in between here. It's a short little lesson, so I'm not going to try and get it too exact. I don't want to make myself too nuts right now. Okay. Even the back flippers have some scales. And when you take some time and really study turtles or study pictures of turtles, you'll get to see the patterns there, okay? And there you have it. I just drew the basic pattern of the Honu, the green sea turtle. And next I'll show you how I modify this design to make it the hawksbill turtle called the Ea. Bing! All right, so now you might be thinking, well, we got a Honu right here. How are we going to make it different to become an Ea? And I tell you what, I'll start right off by making some of these edges a little more pointed in the marginal or the outside scoots, okay? Yeah, the Ea has much more pointed and more jagged edge of its shell. The upper shell is called a carapace. Down below, the other side is called a plastron. And every one of these sections is called a scoot. And I tell you what, I'll do the same type of line. Notice I'm using a bigger pen so you can see a little better what I'm gonna do to modify this to make it become an Ea. And it starts right here in these central scoots. I'm going to point them. Whereas the Honu had a flat edge there, 
the central scoops are now going to become a little bit pointed, okay? There. Once you got this going, yeah, you're making a hawk's bill, not a honu. We're going to radiate these out, and we're going to come down and give it a little point over there too, okay? Come down, give it a little point over there. Forgot to give that one a little point. So it comes down that scoot and gives it a little point. Especially in the young ea, they're even more pointy and overlapping in their scoots, okay? And these are about the same here. All right. So that was the big difference. The edge of the marginal scoots and the central and lateral scoots got a little more pointed. The next obvious thing, why it gets its name Hawksbill, it has a little longer and more pointed um, bill than the Honu, okay? So the Ea is a little longer over there. And if you're underwater diving and you want to know if you're looking at an Ea or a Honu, the Honu have two plates between its eyes, okay? The Ea, look right here, the Ea have four. So that's one of those little technical things that you can do to let your viewer know just which species it is that you're painting, okay? And the front flippers and back flippers, pretty much the same. Again, the tail, if you have a, a juvenile or a female, you got a short tail, or if you got a Adult male, you got a long tail to go off the page over there, okay? Now, one last thing I'll show you on both the Honu and the Ea, they're beautiful shell patterns. They're like radiating sunrises, okay? And so you can make any of your lines kind of radiate, like you have a little sunrise in every scoot. And then sending out the sun's rays, okay? And they got all kinds of patterns and colors you can use, but in general, just imagine a little sunrise in every scoot. Alright, got a little darkness in the maka, and there you have it. When we return, we'll have some fun painting the sea turtle known as Ea. Now join me in my studio as I show you how I go about painting the air. My first task is to cover the entire canvas with paint. I'm using oil paint now, so it gives me a little bit of time to work while the paint is wet. For the turtle itself, I'm putting on a transparent layer where I can still see my pencil drawing beneath. Once you get your first layer on, you might feel a big sense of relief, kind of like a gratification, but then you got to do it all again. So I mix up my colors and I start on my second layer. I love to use phthalo blues and greens, they're the feel good colors. I'm trying to make it seem like we're really underwater. As you can see, the second layer of the painting is much richer. It's what people love about thick paints such as oil paints and acrylics. A first layer might seem kind of like a watercolor, it's kind of light and airy, but when you put your second layer of paint and third and more, it really gives the painting some substance.
I like to have an arsenal of colors, almost anything I think I might need. And now I proceed to paint the painting again. Going over the light parts or the leathery skin of the turtle. And the dark parts. I like to get them nice and rich and thick. Notice how I skim the coat of the light paint over the dark areas so that now when I'm putting my second layer of dark paint, it really becomes rich and thick. You can see my turtle growing, its leathery skin and scales, its texture. In between layers, I like to put a little bit of linseed oil. This is the oil that the paint's made out of. It helps the brush to glide a little better. Notice that I apply it with like an upholstery sponge. You can tear up a couch or something. For this flipper off in the distance, it doesn't have as much intense color. I'm going to use the kind of colors around the ocean, like the aqua blues and greens. Uh, many brands of paint use thalos. There's all kinds of colors and all kinds of names. And I give it a little bit of a pet with a soft brush. That's what really makes a painting nice and smooth. Okay, so now I'm starting to put my second layer of paint on the turtle shell, the plastron down below and the carapace on top. This time I'm choosing to really put some thick paint down because I want this shell to seem like it's, you know, really got some substance to it. If you don't know what color to start with, just start with something. <laughs> if you don't have nothing, you don't got nothing to fix, you know. I don't always know exactly what I'm doing in a painting. I do study the anatomy of nature though, the layers of nature. And I try to figure out what to put on first and next and next. So I build a turtle, I build a painting, just like an engineer. You know, engineers are good artists. But here I go with an arsenal of paint. It's getting to the fun part now. My last part of the painting where I get all the colors I think I might need. I go over the joints between the skin and the scales. Pay a little bit of attention to right where the scales meet the skin. And then one of my favorite parts, adding the reflections to the Hono. Yep, the ocean colors. It's kind of your reward for working so hard. And finally, the maka. The eyes are the window to the soul. This is a surfboard I painted to encourage more ea to come to Hanalei, Kauai and nest again. The Ea are so low in numbers that important steps are being taken to protect them and their nesting sites. One of the groups that helps to protect the Ea is the Hawaii Wildlife Fund. The Hawaii Wildlife Fund does all its work under permits from both the state of Hawaii and the federal government. Among other things, we also are engaged in beach cleanup research uh, and uh, also educational outreach. One of the most joyous occasions is the hatching of an air nest. 
Lucky bystanders watch with amazement as the baby Ea erupt out of the sand and make their way to the sea. The future is uncertain for the little turtles, so the work that's being done to protect them include protecting them from animals and people, and fencing off areas so that the turtles don't go onto the road. At the end of the nesting season, the members and volunteers of the Hawaii Wildlife Fund's Hawksbill Turtle Restoration Project had an end of the season mahalo painting party at Nalu's Southside Grill in Kihei. All right, what you got there? I got one the whole way out. All right. <laughs> Well, we're here at Nalu's getting ready for tonight's painting party. Hey, what's going on here, Patrick? Well, we have the Hawaii Wildlife Fund's year-end field camp season closing party, and we're painting the ea, the honu ea, the hawksbill sea turtle, and we're having fun doing it. Uh, this is quite a group here. There's probably 40 people here all painting. After a hard-working nesting season, the crew and volunteers were rewarded with some great food, great music, and some painting fun. Oh yeah, we're painting pictures. <laughs> Sculpting with paint, yeah? yeah. <laughs> After a couple of hours, we had a whole herd of here at Nalu's. Nalu's here on Maui supported this whole thing with fantastic food, all just donated to the Hawaii Wildlife Fund. And you, Patrick, brought magic, magic, to this year, Hui, celebrating the uh, last hatch of the last nest for 2018 here on Maui. Celeste completed this Ea painting in a four-hour private lesson using Genesis heat set oil paints. With Genesis paints, you can paint as long as you want with wet paint and when you want to dry the paint, you set it with a heat gun. That way you can do several layers of a painting wet and dry in a single sitting. It was nice to see her finally get to put the reflective layers of color over that turtle shell. And finishing it off with that beautiful phthalo green. Nice work, Celeste. You can learn more about Hawaii's turtles, including the Ea, in my book called Sea Turtles of Hawaii. Written with guidance from George Balaz, turtle scientist for NOAA. Mahalo, George.